it is a great time to be alive because today we're talking about subject verb agreement. Now, subjects and verbs have to agree, which is just a fancy way of saying that they have to sound right together. And you're probably used to this in its most basic form. For instance, subject verb agreement explains why you say, by noon, I am always starving, but you say, by noon, Grace is always starving. Subject verb agreement is the idea that the subject determines how the verb sounds or conjugates. Now, of course, it's going to be much trickier than I am and Grace is on the SAT, and you'll have to watch out for subject verb agreement on two major question types, identifying errors and improving sentences. Now, like I said, it gets much trickier, so let's go into depth now. Now, just a second ago, I gave you an easy example of subject verb agreement, I am, and also Grace is. Now the reason it's so easy is that the subject and the verb are next to each other. I is next to M, Grace is next to is. Now the way the SAT makes these subject verb agreement problems tougher is by moving the subject and the verb further apart. And they do it in two ways right here. So in order to see whether the subject and the verb on the SAT sound right together, you're going to have to ignore these two things, these things that are keeping the subject and the verb apart. So they are extra information between commas, and prepositional phrases. And each of these is pretty detailed, so we're going to take time to go in depth with each of them, starting with extra information between commas. First of all, what does this mean, extra information between commas? You know you're dealing with extra information between commas if you could use parentheses or long dashes in place of the pair of commas. Let me show you what that looks like. Sally Ride, the first American woman in space, made history in 1983. Now, the first American woman in space is going to be quote unquote extra information between commas because I could also write it with parentheses and I could also write it with long dashes. Now, these probably won't appear on the SAT, but they're just ways of thinking about how this is extra information being thrown your way. Now, because it's extra information, you're going to be able to ignore it when looking for subject verb agreement. Let's look at an example here. My father, who has sung backup for dozens of solo artists and bands, are truly talented. So we have extra information between commas here. And I know that because I could ignore the commas and put this between parentheses. Like, my father, who has sung backup for dozens of solo artists and bands, are truly talented. Or I could also put them between long dashes. Now, I'm not suggesting that you actually need to go around drawing long dashes and parentheses on the SAT. I'm just saying it's a way of checking if this is extra information. So, if you know it's extra information by applying this little test, you can ignore it for the purposes of subject verb agreement. Let me show you. What's left is a nice short sentence where the subject and the verb are adjacent again. So we're back to that situation like I am or Grace is. We have, my father are truly talented. Now, you probably already knew the sentence was wrong, but now it's even more obvious. My father are should definitely be my father is. So sure enough, here's the final answer. My father, who has sung backup for dozens of solo artists and bands, is truly talented. Let's look at a couple more examples and they'll get a little more subtle. The warnings, which were outlined in the government's special report,